Hey everyone, my name is Jason Yavoska and I'm the product director for CICD here at GitLab. I want to talk a little, little bit about what's new for CICD. Um, this will cover the 12.5, 12.6, and 12.7 release, which were the last three months. I'll talk a little bit as well about some of the themes that we're looking at, uh, and then some of the highlighted popular items that we delivered over this period, and then very briefly touch on what's next. So the themes that we're working on in the CICD area are the following. The first thing I should mention though is over here on the right, you can see uh, the scope that the CICD area covers, um, which is Verify, uh, the stage that covers CI pipelines and testing that's integrated in the CI pipelines. Our package stage, uh, which covers the container registry as well as all the registries for things like NuGet, Maven, NPM, and so on. Uh, and the release stage, which is all about continuous delivery and release management. And so the themes that we're covering here and that we're focused on in this year are speedy, reliable pipelines. Um, so improving the time to first byte, if you will, for uh, CI pipelines, how quickly they're starting up, how quickly you get a runner, uh, all of those sorts of things that make just using CI a lot nicer. Multi-platform support covers things like adding support for Fargate and Windows and Mac runners and things like that um, that'll let you to deploy to more uh, interesting targets. It also covers things like um, um, ML or AI pipelines uh, and supporting different kinds of platforms that you might not just run on, but that you might target. <clears throat> Progressive delivery is a, is a whole exciting area on its own um, that means to take continuous delivery to the next tier. Um, there's a lot of technologies coming out, things like review apps, more advanced controls within feature flags, and other ways to segment your user base. Uh, so during a deployment, you can you know, micro-target essentially the users that you want to see and get feedback on. And progressive delivery is something that's emerging that's kind of tying all of that together. Uh, single application CI CD. <clears throat> so one of the big advantages that we have here at GitLab is that uh, we've got issue tracking, we've got monitoring, we've got security scanning, we've got all of these other things that are part of the GitLab single application um, that we're able to tie together in CI CD. So that's a big focus for us. Doing powerful things easy. One of the huge focuses for this coming year is the onboarding experience and making it easy to get up and running in CI CD very quickly and to do powerful things uh, very quickly. Um, so if speedy reliable pipelines is the time to your first byte, to your first you know, execution of your script that you've written, then this would be kind of time to your first green build. Um, so the first time that you're trying to play with GitLab or that you're importing a new project into it, how long does it take before you uh, get your first build up and running, that you get your deployment and it's all green and everything's working? Um, that's a huge focus for us this year. Uh, and then compliance is code and secure secret. So um, evidence collection during the releases, which we'll talk about a little bit more, and making compliance, um, governance, and those sorts of things just a part of your normal workflow um, is a, another big advantage that we can have because of the single application. We have access to all of this data and we can automatically collect it for you. Uh, but then also um, secure secrets is an interesting area, improving the, um, the way that secrets are managed inside of GitLab, our own secrets, your secrets, and the ones that are used as part of CI CD. That's all part of our vision. Um, there's more detail, a ton of more detail on this, of course. Um, I'll share the link to this presentation in the, um, in the, the video notes, I guess. Uh, and so you can read more there. You can also read our complete direction page, which these are a part of. Um, so if we dive into 12.5, the first thing that I want to touch on is associating milestone with releases. Um, so Improving release management in like kind of a pure sense in the way that it used to be done in Excel or, or slightly more modern approaches that are out there today is a, is a big focus for us. Um, and we recently released this releases feature. Um, in this case, we've now made it so that you can not only uh, create a release, but you can tie that into the milestones that are a part of it, which gives a, an interesting access to state information for that release. Um, so you can see the progress. You can find the release from the milestone, vice versa. And um, this starts to tie together and empower our releases feature to have access to more data, be able to do more powerful things to help you out. Um, in 12.5, we also released an environments dashboard for pipelines. This is also kind of targeting that more traditional style of release management um, that we want to improve within GitLab, where you have, instead of doing continuous delivery to a uh, production environment, you've got, you know, uh, a series of environments that you might deploy to, like a, uh, a test environment, then a stage environment, a UAT environment of some kind, and then um, production, and maybe even like a failover or something like that. So those kinds of clusters of environments that can bridge 
um, projects and, um, and, uh, and, and deployments, then uh, we've created this new dashboard that lets you see what's deployed where and see if it's green. <clears throat> and if you're working in those kinds of environments where you've got a bunch of environments that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, you need to know where you should test. If you're ready to test, um, this will really help with that. Um, squash and merge for merge trains is another really, really great feature. So adding squash and merge uh, to, the, um, uh, to the capabilities is a nice option. Um, but merge trains overall is what we're, we're really seeing that as a game changing feature. Um, we launched that in 12.0. Um, and what it does is it queues up all of your merges that are happening across your project and builds them all in sequence off of cumulative refs that are assembled based on the contents of each of those merges. So um, what that lets you do is avoid that situation where you've got a ton of developers, they're all trying to build and deploy into the same branch, but then somebody gets in there uh, and then it invalidates all of the others and it's just kind of a mess and I'm sure everybody's sort of familiar with that. This will automatically handle that for you. It will just queue everything up. It will recalculate if something fails and it will rerun whatever needs to be run. Um, but it'll ensure that master stays green uh, and that things are always running smoothly for you. Uh, in 12.6, we also added automated evidence collection for releases. So what this does is it takes a snapshot of the metadata of the release. Um, which includes not just the, the release itself, but the linked milestones, the linked issues. It assembles them in a JSON file and just saves a snapshot of it. Um, so it's available later for audits uh, or other kind of compliance things that may happen. Um, we're adding more abilities to be able to take additional snapshots at additional times so you can compare how a release is evolving. Um, but this is, I think, really demonstrates the power of how we want to leverage our single application to make it so that Compliance, evidence collection, all those sorts of things are not something that somebody has to build and maintain and, and, and worry about. It just is happening automatically because GitLab has access to all of this stuff and um, we can do it for you and it's a, it's a nice benefit. Um, we've also added the uh, Conan package registry, which is a C and C++ package manager. Uh, it's a focus for us uh, to continue adding as many of these as possible. You'll probably see us launching uh, Conan or, or not, uh, different kinds of package registries. Uh, in, in most releases going forward. Uh, we're also working with our community to try and build these as well so that we can go even faster. Um, but this is just such a useful feature where you can store your packages that you're building in GitLab. Again, GitLab then has the metadata and all of the details about what um, these packages contain, who built them, um, what the dependencies were and everything. That can then feed into the continuous delivery part of the uh, application and um, then we can handle those dependencies for you. This is all part of the, the ecosystem of, of building stuff with GitLab, deploying it, and um, you know, archiving the, the binaries that you built. Uh, in 12.7, <clears throat> we also added <clears throat> excuse me, resource groups. Um, so we heard from a lot of our customers that um, the, you know, a lot of times for a lot of projects, you can deploy concurrently to, to production or whatever environment um, because you're deploying different things and they don't necessarily step on each other. Uh, but um, there are certain kinds of environments um, and certain kinds of situations where you really need to limit uh, concurrency in some way. Um, so we have resource groups now, um, which can be defined at the project level and then uh, enforced uh, so that only one deployment to that environment could happen at a time. Um, so if you've got a physical sort of environment that can only do one kind of test at a time, you can constrain that. If you want to limit uh, deployments to your production environment to be happening one at a time, you can configure that. Uh, it's, all, it's based on a custom tag. Uh, so you can um, you know, kind of configure this to really work in any way that you want. And it's a powerful feature that we were very happy to deliver. Um, yeah, and then so the build data, collecting that inside of the uh, repository data, I sort of touched on this earlier, um, is just such a powerful tool for troubleshooting as well. Um, so we did some user research where we were talking uh, about why people use the package registry. And something that I wouldn't say we were exactly surprised to find, but was interesting to confirm, is that uh, a lot of times people go here only when something goes wrong. Um, so what we did is we kind of rethought the interface a little bit and surfaced some of the information that would be more relevant and more interesting to use when you're troubleshooting. Um, so that's a nice kind of benefit that we got out of talking with our customers. Uh, another super, super exciting one that, that had been in the works for a little bit was the Windows Shared Runner Beta, which is now, which is now open if anybody wants to, uh, to play with that. Um, but you can get Windows, Windows Runners, which we've supported for a long time, uh, but you can now get them in the shared fleet. 
Um, so if, even if you're using gitlab.com, you don't have to build your own Windows runner. Uh, you, you can just go grab one of the ones that we have and uh, that'll be available to you and you can do Windows builds. Um, if you're interested in trying this out, we would love to hear your feedback. It's free at the moment, um, but will be a paid feature in the future. We'll also be looking at Mac uh, runners once this is up and running. Um, Parent-child pipelines, yeah. So uh, this is a great one where um, there's uh, certain use cases um, where things can get really complex in your configuration. So uh, mono repos is kind of the, the prototypical example of this, but anywhere that you've got a very long, very complicated configuration uh, for your uh, pipelines, child parent pipelines is gonna help you out because what it does is let you take out the part of your pipeline that's oriented around a sub part of your project, move that into its own file, and then trigger that as part of your master pipeline. So it's very easy to think about this in terms of a mono repo where you've got, you know, maybe 10 or even 100 or more um, individual projects that build. Uh, you can still set up your master uh, orchestrator pipeline, which kind of keeps track of all these things, the dependencies between them. Um, but it also will let you move the configuration that's specific about building a single one of these repos, or not repos, but uh, projects into uh, its own configuration file that lives with that project. And then you can trigger that as a downstream pipeline. It will run concurrently. Uh, and then you can you know, move on and, uh, and run your pipelines in this way. Uh, one thing that I'm excited to touch on, and <laughs> it's not already out, but uh, I just can't resist it, is um, that we're going to allow for dynamically generating these configurations in the future. So um, if you're doing things like matrix builds where you're targeting um, you know, a number of different architectures and a number of different projects, uh, and you don't want to write your configuration to contain every single one of those permutations, um, then you can use parent-child pipelines to dynamically generate the uh, CIEML that's needed on the fly and then trigger a child pipeline based on that configuration, which will make that so much easier, so much simpler, and help make the uh, configuration for your GitLab CIEMLs very, very simple. Uh, and then lastly, something that we've been working on for some time and um, are continuing to work on, uh, we released the directed acyclic graph in 12.2 uh, and have been releasing improvements to it ever since and, and will continue to do so. Um, the uh, directed acyclic graph pipeline view uh, that we're uh, showing here that um, uh, is a little bit confusing if you're, if you're not familiar with it, but um, basically what the DAG lets you do is uh, run a pipeline automatically as quickly as possible based on the dependencies that are defined between the jobs. Um, so if you've got very, very complex pipelines, um, or if you just want to let GitLab handle the dependencies for you, instead of sequencing things out in stages, which is the traditional way of doing it, you can just, in your GitLab CI YAML, define the relationships between the jobs and say this job needs this job, this job needs this job, and then we will just sort it out for you, generate one of these um, directed acyclic graphs, which you can see on the screen, uh, and then um, run it for you in the most efficient way possible. Um, so this does simplify configuration as well. In, in certain cases, you're, you're not having to worry about stages in the way that you had to before. A lot of teams did things like tuning, you know, moving things between stages in order to try and get the fastest pipelines. Now, you can just use uh, the DAG and the needs keyword and we'll do that for you. And uh, it's just a, a much nicer way of working. Simpler, faster, it's a win. Um, and then I just want to highlight here, amongst all of the things that we've delivered in 12.5, 12.6, and 12.7, um, this just highlights kind of our user focus. Uh, we've, you can see the number of upvotes here, which is the, the thumbs up on these individual items. And um, we've really tried to deliver a ton of value um, that people have been looking for uh, in our last few releases. And this continues going back all the way to chill.0. Um, but yeah, um, it, it is our priority to, to deliver these top issues and, uh, and, and make the product better by working with our customers. And that's, uh, that's super, super important to us. And if, uh, if you are interested in any issues, upvoting them is a great way to help get them prioritized, but also reaching out to me or the PMs for the area is another great way to let us know that something is important to you and, and we, can, we can move forward on it. Uh, you can imagine with CI and, and some other areas that are a little bit more mature, there's a ton of, ton of things going on. And so a little bit of a nudge uh, is always welcome and appreciated. And then that's it for looking back. Um, looking forward, and, and this is, uh, none of this is, is complete yet, so it, it's not a guarantee that they will be in 12.8, but, uh, but hopefully, and um, it should be soon, if, if not 12.8. Um, some of the highlights that I want to touch on going forward are um, 
the one that I already touched on was dynamic child pipeline creation via artifact includes. Um, but we're going to be adding also accessibility scanning in review apps, which is a nice way that we're bridging together our CI pipelines and our review apps to do just fully automatic accessibility testing for you and, and be able to give you those results. Um, adding the ability to trigger a pipeline where another project is rebuilt, uh, and then improving the expansiveness of the code quality report. On the package side, we're adding the NuGet, uh, which is a .NET focused repository, which will dovetail nicely with the improvements we're doing for Windows users overall, but uh, especially with the Windows shared runners. On the release side, we're adding the ability to collect evidence at the release end date, uh, and then beyond this, like I mentioned, we'll be adding um, collecting evidence at other moments as well. Um, progress view for a release, taking advantage of the milestone data that we have. Um, adding the ability for our feature flags feature, uh, which we introduced recently, to be able to set strategies per environment. Um, adding AWS uh, environment variables that will help make it easier to set up your AWS integration. Um, allow, uh, allowing only forward incremental deployments. So um, if you're doing incremental deployments, we will help enforce that those only move forward. Uh, and then finally, group deploy tokens, which um, at the moment we have project level deploy tokens. Um, group deploy tokens will let you set up configuration that's a little bit more easy to manage if you have a lot of projects in a single group. So sort of if you're doing the opposite to a mono repo, uh, where you've got tons and tons of projects for small microservices, uh, something like group deploy tokens will make something like that much easier to manage. Um, so hopefully that was uh, helpful and interesting. I would love to hear your feedback and um, you can always reach out to me. I'm jason at gitlab.com. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks.